Hello YouTube, we are back with another video going through the Footsie's Handbook. We're on like part 8 or something, but let's get right into it. Let's hop into the game. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on jumping, which is actually a big part of Street Fighter. I've mentioned it in a previous video. Sometimes people will tell you, don't jump in Street Fighter, it's scrubby. It's not, it's good if you use it well. Let's find out how to use it well. Okay, so since jumping is such a slow commitment and since ground counters to cross-up attempts are much quicker than the air time required to reach cross-up position, effective cross-up setups are more about anticipation than reaction. Due to sheer damage potential, one well-timed ambiguous cross-up can turn the tide of an entire battle. Finding reliable ways to create such opportunities is essential to any offensive-minded game plan, sometimes to the point of passing up guaranteed damage in favor of arranging convenient cross-ups. So let's take a look at the video. Yeah, so rather than go for a full Punisher, so like Ken whiffs a Shoryuken, Guile can probably do, you know, he's charging, he can probably do Crouch Medium Kick into, or Crouch Medium Punch into Flash Kick or something. Instead, he let, he drops his combo on purpose, he pushed Ken back to a spot where it'd be very awkward to anti him. You, you obviously wouldn't be expecting to have to anti him, right? You'd probably be expecting to getting hit. Gets a nice cross up, more damage, gets a knockdown. Nice. Okay, that's not something you should, you know, aim to do in street fighter 6 right like you're not gonna drop your combos to get a jump in all because some of the combos give you such good oki in street fighter 6 but the idea is, is there that getting a nice cross up uh it's hard it's hard to deal with as the opponent or you can't just dp it uh, a lot of anti airs won't hit it so it's, it's a very nice thing to want to set up so let's find out how to set it up so eliminate the opponent's capacity to anti-air by knocking them down first. In fact, one of the primary goals of footsies is to land a sweep or a psychic DP precisely for the purpose of securely jumping over them as they stand up. So simple, right? So in Street Fighter 6, getting sweeps is still a thing, right? It's not like you'll never sweep, but it's it's much more character dependent. And like a lot of characters don't uh, play footsies with their sweeps. Um, characters like Jamie do, Cammy does. Um, but the, the idea is here, like I said, in Street Fighter 6, there's so many other ways to get good knockdowns. You don't need to get a sweep. Any raw crouch medium kick will lead into a drive rush, which will give you a knockdown. So when someone's knocked down, it's very hard to deal with anti -airs. As we can see here, he gets a psychic DP and jumps over. And Vega, it's very hard for Vega to um, DP this, right? There are ways. If you Sometimes you fight someone who's so good at cross-cutting. But setting yourself up for a situation like this is obviously very good. Let's uh, go back into it. So bait your opponent into committing a slow attack and jump over them as it whiffs. This method is slightly more complicated and considerably riskier, but there are several ways to get it done. You can tick with light attacks to push them into position, then fake a throw and go for the cross up as their counter throw misses. You can catch them focusing too heavily on ground footsies and jump over the crouch medium kick pokes. That's something we're going to look at. While they're fishing to land a super move, you can even poke them from a safe distance until they get frustrated enough to become predictable with their counter pokes. Then jump over one as soon as you feel out their rhythm. So we'll talk about those last two. Is it something that happens a lot? Yeah, so this Chun-Li is very focused on footsies. Look, look, she's she's trying very hard to uh, space for her crouch medium kick. Ken just jumps over her, right? Walks forward a bit, jumps over her. The thing with this that I want you to pay attention to is that he's not just like jumping at her like all willy-nilly. He's walking back and forth a bit. He's making it look like he's down to play some footsies and then he walks forward and jumps, right? When you were put in a situation, like let's say you tech a throw in Street Fighter 6, it resets you to this like perfect jump distance and you jump, everyone's waiting for that because like you, you haven't given them a reason to get scared of something else yet. When you start walking a bit first, you know, you, you make people feel like you're going to play footsies with them and then you try to jump over them, it's much, much harder to deal with. Um, you can even poke them from a safe distance until they get frustrated enough to be predictable with their counter poke. So this is something that happens a lot with Cami that I do. Um, where I'll do a move that's like, you know, minus four. Like this one, on block. And no one, you can't hit, like, you know, you can't hit Cami with like a very quick move. So a lot of people, after they block this, they, they might do a, a much more like heavily committal move. Like something like this. If I was Chun-Li, you know, maybe I do this. Probably not because that one's a little slow. She might do her uh, crouch mini kick. So by making someone block this and thinking it's their turn and then you jump over them, this is something that it, it really does work. Obviously, it's not something that works all the time. Some people will block that stand medium kick from Cammy and they'll do nothing. They'll wait out to see what you do next. Some people will do very low committal moves. Maybe they'll just jab in case you press another button and trying to counter poke you. So you have to fill out your opponent, right? Everything, as we've talked about before, depends on your opponent, depends on the information they've given you. But it's definitely like something to keep in your bag of tricks. Let's say you press this button once and you immediately notice they're doing like a very big move. You can go for a spacing trap as we talked about in the, in the past. You can also try to jump over them while they're uh, like committing. 
let's take a look at what that might look like in Street Fighter 6. Okay, so Ch Chun Li's uh, sweep is minus seven on block. Almost no character can punish it from a good distance. So maybe she goes for something like this in a situation, right? So I do this, she blocks it. And it's very awkward for her to block that cross up now, right? To anti air it. Maybe she can if she did a very late up kick. I don't know. But it's very awkward for her to try to anti air that if she's looking to counter poke me. She can, right? Maybe you'll play opponent who does and then you're gonna have to stop doing this. But again, as I said, this is a good trick to have. Um, you can also go for a spacing trap, as we talked about in previous videos. You try to mix all these things together to make your offense very difficult to deal with as the person uh, who's defending against it, right? Okay, next part. Do something chaotic, then go for a cross-up while Confusion throws off their reflexes. Reflex. Long enough to get them into trouble. Maintain that pressure for as long as you can. Keep them off balance or until they gain enough meter to tilt risk first reward skills too far in their favor. Back off when you sense desperation or at least switch to attack patterns which are safe from their most tempting comeback scenario. So, uh, I remember this clip. It's probably Blanca, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, okay. So even in Street Fighter 6, you might notice this. Blanca is the king of chaos, right? He'll do stuff that's very weird. And it's so awkward to, like, start anti-airing him because, like, it's hard to even tell what's going on, right? So watch this. He hits it with a ball. Okay, he jumps once. He gets that jump in. Does a little few hops. Plus... He starts jumping, right? jump in, again, again, jump again, right? This is such a weird, awkward situation as Sagat that it's like, are you buffering a DP in this situation? Probably not, like, it, it's just too chaotic, right? So going for cross-ups in very chaotic situations is something that's very hard to deal with. Um, you might even notice people do it. I, I should have found a clip. I remember watching Punk do this, like, uh, maybe it was at EVO, or maybe it was on a stream, I don't remember. But he made someone block a uh, jump heavy kick from Kami from a very far range like that. And they blocked it and he didn't go for a strike throw he immediately just jumped again he did this and that's so awkward to deal with because you block that crouch that jump heavy kick and you're like is he gonna like shimmy me is he gonna pressure me with jabs and he just jumps again and you're like what the what the fuck? and especially with a character like cammy or kimberly she doesn't have to do this right a character like cammy kimberly even who else could do it anyone who could change their jump trajectory chun li even you don't have to do this right you, you can do this and you go for a cross up sure but she could also do something like this, right? That was a terrible dive kick. You should never do that one. But maybe from a bit further, you could do like that if it was a little bit closer. And then you make them... Maybe they get hit by that because they think you're going for a cross-up, right? Obviously, that's more specific to Kami, but it's a good trick. In general, when you kind of instill chaos in the match, they're in a situation where they feel on the back pedal and you go for cross-ups, it's much, much more awkward to deal with. You will fight people who are very good at beating your cross-ups with uh, cross-cut DPs. If they don't have a cross-cut DP, it's obviously way safer. Um, but feel out your opponent. As I said, I don't want to keep saying this, but it depends on the opponent you're fighting. If stuff like this, how much mileage you get out of it. Okay. Shut down an opponent's cross-up attempt with a vertically aimed normal move. Then time your jump to catch them with a cross-up as they land on their feet. On a related note, whoever wins an, as an air-to-air -air encounter usually lands first by a large enough margin to immediately re-jump for a cross-up. So this is kind of similar, but it's a very specific situation, right? This is almost a, it's not a chaotic situation, but it's a very awkward one. And I love Street Fighter 4, I missed this shit. All right, air to air. Immediately jumps again for a cross up, right? It's such, as Honda, it's so awkward that like, you're on your way down, he jumped again, you were probably expecting him to meet you on the ground and maybe strike throw you. Very, very awkward to deal with. Even if he did block it, it's a good position for Gokan. I mean, maybe not the best one because he almost cornered himself, but you get what I mean. Another alternative is to wait until someone jumps from a long distance, then jump over them as they come down. This works especially well in games with air blocking and air parry me mechanisms, which give players an incentive to forego attacking. So I actually have been using this myself because I found it very awkward to deal with people who jump on me from like this distance, where you know that they're jumping and you can't really deal with it, right? Like, so, so Kami can probably do it, but I'm not like ready with my heavy DP. So if someone jumps on me from this distance, especially if you're a fireball character, people will do this to try to jump over fireballs. Um, you, you probably won't anti them from there, from this distance where Kami just landed. Something you can do, this is a very awkward situation for them, is that you just jump over them. You just jump over them when they do that, right? So let's say I'm fighting a Chun-Li. She jumps at me from this distance. I don't want to anti her. I just jump. I just realize she's jumping and then I'm going to jump over her. It's a, it's a very awkward situation where it'll be very hard for her to deal with my jump in now. And I get very three plus frames if she doesn't deal with it, right? Very good trick to getting a nice cheeky jump in. I like that one a lot. Yeah, this is something I've just been adding myself in very recently and it does work. And even like if they block your cross a big deal, you know, you're in their face, you're plus, you strike throw, etc. 
So as you can see, there are countless ways to go about setting cross-ups. Depending on the character matchup and your opponent's tendencies, it's just a matter of developing a strong enough ground game to train your opponents to stop expecting you to jump. So this is the very, very important part. I almost wish it was the first thing you read here. When people say jumping is like scrubby or like you need to stop jumping in Street Fighter, for the most part they mean when it's obvious you're just committing way too long into the air, you can't block in Street Fighter games. So you're just going to take free damage, you're going to take a knockdown, now your opponent kind of gets, gets to do whatever they want. But when you do a lot of the other things we've talked about in this uh, let's see, hand guidebook, handbook, whatever, um, series, like, you know, you're playing footsies, you're poking in and out of ranges, you're doing spacing traps, you're baiting with shorts, uh, people will stop expecting you to jump, right? You're walking a lot. When people, when people see walking, they don't, especially walking back, they don't expect jumps that often and then you sneak in your jumps you get such free plus frames it's hard to get come by free plus frames in this game you always have to spend bar and whatnot one of the only ways to get a good amount of plus frames is making someone block your jump right and there there, there is an art to jumping it's not don't just do it for fun it, if you ever jump and your kind of reasoning behind it was i just wanted to get in it's a bad habit right even if it worked you you didn't think enough about why your jump should work and that should be a strategy you build around uh, anyway, at the beginning of the match, everyone tries to stay out of cross-up range or to refrain from using slow attacks at that distance. Once you catch them slipping into that spot and behaving dangerously, that's when you should start looking for a chance to cross them up without making your intentions obvious. Yeah, so th this uh, article is focused very much on cross-ups specifically. And I do agree with it. Cross-ups are like, it's, it always feels nice to hit one. It's very awkward for your opponent to deal with, especially if they're not used to anterioring them. I, I want to apply it to jumping in general that... There's a, there's a very big difference, you'll notice this the higher you go in ranks, about people who jump well and people who jump dumb, right? When people jump stupidly, you just anti them for free, you get free damage, you build meter, you get a knockdown depending on who your character gets after their anti -airs. But when people are good at jumping, it, it kind of information overload, you know? You, start, you stop focusing on the ground game because they're jumping, now they dashed at you, right? Or you stop focusing on the ground game because they're jumping and they just walked at you and now you're scared, you're like, what do I do? And you start walking back to the corner, and it's not a great spot to be in. Uh, so this is not in the in this part, but what do you do against cross-ups? Well, it's very character dependent Let's uh, make Chun Li do this to us. Okay, so what do you do against cross-ups if your character is not good at dealing with it? Right, so here's one example where if I try to DP this I'll miss obviously, you know, you don't want to do that So cross-cutting is an option if your character has a DP. It's not the easiest thing to do. Maybe I'll make a video I'm sure there's plenty of them out there Where you can kind of walk forward a bit and change your deep make your dp go around but that's also hard to do if you re react to the jump late what i like to do if i react to a jump late let's say i'm standing here is i'll jump back jab i think that's a really good option it was very popular in street fighter 5 jump back medium punch if you have a good enough medium punch cami's hard knocks down which is good or even better jump back air throw if your character has it that th those are my go-to options if your character can do it another option is to walk forward a bit as soon as you notice the cross-up it works on a lot of characters, especially Cammy. Cammy's jump light kick is her only cross up, and it's not—it's not very good. We could, i will show you it with Chun here. Right? If you react fast enough, just walk forward as far as you can. But maybe the proximity guard might mess with you. And then, yeah, you can uh, punish counter them on the way down. But the my my go to is personally the jump back jab, jump back medium kicks. If someone actually wants to hit your head with a cross up, they have to do their jumping pretty late which means I can do mine as fast as possible. I'm, I'm jumping like pretty late here on purpose. The second Chun-Li jumps, I'm not leaving the ground. I'm waiting until she's like almost about to reach my head because that's like a little more uh, how it would look in the game. So that that's my option. Um, You don't get like a huge punish here, obviously, right? I'm just doing what? How much damage is it? 720 damage, not huge. We're resetting to neutral, but it's better than blocking the cross-up. It's way better than blocking a cross-up. Another big thing is that this is huge in the corner. I know we've talked about another video about corner pressure. That this is a very good spot that you want to, you always want to maintain. So people will try to cross you up in the corner a lot. So make sure you're good at your jump back jabs, jump back uh, mediums. And I actually think this is a better option than doing cross cut DP if possible, because you keep the corner. If you cross cut DP, yeah, it's it's fine. But you lose the corner. It's kind of like attacks. People are willing to pay, right? She gets up, she's out of the corner. Whereas if I did my jump back medium punch, that's not the case. Anyway, I don't want to keep rambling. I hope you learned something about offensively jumping and how to... And like, even if you don't do the exact things in this video, come up with ways that make it hard to deal with your jumps and implement them because it's a very good way to start your uh, your block strings, your pressure, and I hope you learned how to deal with cross-ups and jump-ins in general. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like, comment, and subscription. We are almost done the footsies uh, handbook. 
We have chapter 10 and then some supplements. I skipped chapter 8 because it's about hop kicks and dive kicks, which are very specific. I'll, it's probably the last thing I'll do because it doesn't apply to every character. I'll make it more about the characters that do have them in Street Fighter 6. So I want to make sure um, I, I find out every character that it applies to first. But yeah, we're, we, we're almost done. We've learned a lot. Hopefully you guys are doing well in your ranked grind. I recently just got to master with Chun today. And I don't think my Chun's very good. I was just using the footsies, you know, the fundamentals. And it worked. Hopefully it's working for you too. Uh, see you guys next time. Stay beautiful, my friends.